your title, you should not put something like pressure versus volume because they're not fighting each other. Does that make sense? So don't put verses in there. Um, just give yourself a unique title that's describing the data that is being um, plotted. If you have like, let's say pressure and volume, I'm just using this as an example. Make sure you guys are putting your units in here. You don't need to be redundant and put the units all the way down um, after each value, as long as your unit is at the top of each column, okay? Um, and I think that's all I can uh, that's all I can think of right now. And then in terms of graphs, I may ask you to draw hand draw a graph or create a graph using a Google spreadsheet. Um, in chemistry, sometimes they will ask you to provide the constant, which is sometimes called the proportionality constant, which is the slope. Um, typically in chemistry, we will be doing scatter plots and then we draw a best fit line and then we get the equation for that best fit line. You will never ever do like um, bar charts in here or anything. So the graphs that you guys typically did in bio aren't done in chemistry, okay? Um, and then I think that's about it. You know that the general equation for the line of best fit is y equals mx, mx plus b, m is the slope, B is the y-intercept, yes? They will sometimes replace the letter for M, which is slope, with a K, okay? So sometimes they will say that the constant that's relating the two variables that are involved is a K. That's just kind of something that we do in this class, okay? And then um, on the next page, they give you some examples of the types of relationships that you may see. Um, you will likely see a direct relationship and probably an inverse relationship when we talk about gases. Um, exponential, we might see that when we talk about um, uh, reaction rates, okay? And then in terms of calculating the slope, do I need to review how to do that with the y2 minus y1 or are we all relatively familiar with that? We're good, okay. Let's take a look at the last page then. Okay, do you guys want to determine what kind of relationship is present? Give me the um, full equation for C, like in terms of Y equals MX plus B, and let's see what you come up with, and then we're done with this section. You ready? What'd you get for A? <laughs> Yeah. How about B? Yeah. And then C. Give me an equation that you guys got. Perfect. We're good. Okay. All right. Now, um, we are going to be doing a lab on measuring the density of some things. So why don't I mention a couple things. Turn to... Um, number 11. And I'm just going to explain a couple of things uh, before we set things up for the lab and take our break, just so you kind of have an idea of where we're going. There are, here we are right here. You guys ever calculated density before? So density equals mass divided by volume. There is something called the density triangle, which looks like this. Obviously, you could be solving for mass, volume, or density. If you cover up the variable that you're solving for, it will give you the equation that you need. Okay, so for instance, if I'm solving for density and I cover up the D, it says D equals M over V, okay? If I'm solving for mass, I cover it up, and I'm going to take density times volume. If I'm solving for volume, I cover it up, and it says to take mass divided by density. Okay, so if you're just canceling units, this is super easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, if you've got to convert units, you got to make sure you do that before you do this. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're given the mass and the volume of something or you measured them in a lab, you can calculate density super straightforward. But if I give you, let's say, um, three different metals, let's say they're all the same metal or they're different, you can actually plot the different sizes on a graph and then the slope of the best fit line would be the density for that metal. Okay, so this is what you will be doing um, today. So let me give you an example. So here, let's look at copper. 
Here we have copper with um, the corresponding volumes. And then we've got actually one, two, three, four, five different samples of copper. So we obtained the mass, we got the corresponding volumes. The volumes were obtained by doing something called volume by displacement. That means you guys have a graduated cylinder, you put some volume of water in there, and this would be your initial volume of water. You need to make sure that you have enough water in that graduated cylinder so when you put your metal into it, it's submerged. So let's say I took a piece of copper and then that copper was a cylinder and let's say it is now in here which will cause the water level to rise. So the water level will rise some, and then this will be my final volume of water. So in order to get the volume of the brass metal, we would take the final volume minus the initial volume. So let's say this was like five milliliters and this was like eight milliliters. So this would be eight minus five, so the volume of the brass cylinder would be, or the copper cylinder, sorry, would be three milliliters. That's volume by displacement. That's what you will do. If for some reason your metal is not fully submerged in the water, you will not get an accurate volume reading, okay? Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna plot. So since um, density is mass over volume and you're gonna calculate the slope, that means mass would have to be on the y-axis and volume would have to be on the x-axis, okay? So I'm just telling you, I'm not gonna like draw this really accurately. You're gonna end up having something like five, five dots, draw your best fit line through the data, calculate the slope, that is your density. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so that's the end of this section.